So when I was out in Colorado, I used the hell out of the Mavic Air 2. Primarily, I used the Mavic Air 2 with the Freewell anamorphic lens, but what I haven't done has showcased how you get the footage to look the way it did in that recent vlog. So today I'm gonna to show you and do a tutorial on how you de-squeeze the footage and how you can cinematically color grade that. I actually really hate that term cinematic, but I do think it really does apply here specifically when we're talking about this Freewell lens. Let's get started. Good everybody, Ken here, you're watching Original Dobo. In today's video, I'm gonna do a tutorial on how to de-squeeze and edit the footage off the Mavic Air 2 utilizing the Freewell anamorphic lens. This is really my favorite accessory. So without wasting too much time, I have some clips loaded up in Premiere Pro. Now, if you're a Final Cut Pro editor, let me know in the comments down below. I'll do a tutorial on how you de-squeeze the footage with Final Cut Pro along with a color grading tutorial. Actually, I'll have Paul do that one since he's really versed in Final Cut Pro. But let's go ahead and jump into Premiere so I can show you how this works. So first things first, we wanna go ahead and grab the shots that we are going to want to showcase. Now, really quickly, I shot all these clips in 4K, 60 frames per second in d -cine alike So I'm getting the flattest sort of exposure right out of the gate. Let me start off with this clip right here. This was sort of um, a clip of me running backward. It's stupid, it's such a goofy clip. Um, but let's let's go here. Does, I don't know how well it's gonna do cinematically, but let's go ahead and do this. First thing we wanna do is de-squeeze the footage, right click, go up to modify. You're gonna wanna go ahead and interpret the footage and go to conform. When you go to conform, drop this toggle down to HD anamorphic 1080 1.333 crop factor, hit okay. And you'll notice that the footage is completely stretched and that's actually what we wanna see. I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, grab a piece of this when I start it running to, I guess about here, that looks fine. Um, what a ridiculous clip. I'm gonna drop that down into my timeline. Now, you're at, now you'll see that it's asking me to change the sequence. One thing to keep in mind is that if you want your sequence to change from your normal aspect ratio, then you'll go ahead and change that. But I don't want my aspect ratio to change. I'll explain more about that here in a second. So I'm gonna keep the existing. Now you'll notice there's nothing really different about this so far, but if I double click on my footage, you'll see that I can actually adjust the crop factor and fit more of it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust it to right about there so I can get that sort of letter bar effect. I think that looks cool, but if you wanna do a true anamorphic, you can leave the resolution as what it is. And if you go down to properties, that will actually tell you, you'll see it's 30, uh, 3840 by 2160. So it's just doing the cropped aspect ratio. So the resolution doesn't change just because we have the anamorphic effect in place. It still says the same. So now we have this clip in place. We're gonna go ahead and color correct this. I'm gonna open up Lumetri scopes and you can see I have some clipping. That was because the sun was coming up over the mountains. So the first thing I wanna do is go to my colors and I wanna go ahead and fix some of that. I'm gonna bring the whites down just a little bit, just to where they're underneath the 100 mark. That's what you wanna see. Other data is looking pretty good. So I wanna go ahead and bring the shadows down just a tad and right about there. Not too much, because I want to sort of keep me exposed. And then I want to go ahead and add a little bit of contrast. I usually start off with 20 and then go up from there, especially if I'm doing like sort of a vlog like this. 20 to 40 is pretty much good. 35 looks to be pretty good. You can see we're already making a dent in this footage. Next thing I want to do is go ahead and add a little bit of saturation. I like to do 120%, just like that. I think that looks perfect. Now, because this clip was shot with auto white balance, and the sun's coming up over the mountain. Two things I wanna do, I wanna go ahead and just grab my eyedropper and just tap my hat here, or my hoodie, because you can see that's sort of gray and you'll see it's gonna warm up the scene and that right there looks awesome. And I may add just a little bit of magenta. I don't like um, too much green in the shot. I think that looks pretty good. Let's look at the before, after, before, after. And that clip is completely color corrected and honestly, I can go ahead and put a little bit of a curve in there and we'll call that a day. We'll talk about finalized lots here in a little bit. Let's grab another clip here, something a little bit different. Um, this scene looks pretty good, actually. Um, actually, I love this because there's some good detail here. So again, decent alike. I'm just going to grab it from here to actually we'll go from here to here. So that's where I want to go. I'm going to right click again, modify the clip. I'm going to interpret the footage 
and we'll conform to, and again, we'll do HD133. And then I'm just gonna drag it into my timeline. You'll notice that this is gonna take up the whole screen. So simply all you have to do is right click, copy the previous clip, and that's gonna take the attributes from the previous clip. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna paste those attributes. Now, the only attributes I want is the motion. I do not want the Lumetri color. I just want the motion because watch what happens. Bam, it keeps the same aspect ratio there. So that way I don't have to redo that and it looks all janky. All right, let's go ahead and start grading this clip and we're just color correcting. We're not doing a grade actually to this. So this is just color correction. So I'm gonna go up to the basic correction, lower down my shadows. It's gonna give me a little bit more contrast. I'm gonna bump up the highlights a little bit on this clip. I'm gonna add some contrast and contrast. Again, all this is done to whatever taste you feel. There's no right or wrong way to do this. And saturation, I'm gonna go 120 on the saturation. And right there, that looks pretty good. Curves, I'm gonna add a subtle, I mean a subtle S curve, just very slightly, just like that. A little on off action. And uh, I can go back up top here go to that white part and see if it adjusts the white balance and it did just slightly and I could warm this up a little bit more if I want it and maybe bring it back more towards the greens on this one but that looks pretty good right there and that clip I'll call done for the color correction we'll come back and do a final grade to that one in just a moment let's grab one more clip here and let's grab something that looks a little bit different let's grab something maybe uh, I'm trying to find a clip that I really, really like. There's so many of them. Let's grab this road clip I grabbed. I like this clip. This was a pretty cool shot. And there we go. So I'll grab this road clip. I'm going to drop this in and you can see uh, I didn't modify it. So let me go ahead and modify that first. I'm going to right click, modify interpret footage. And again, I'm conforming to the square pixels of HD anamorphic 1080. And there we go. So I'm going to drop that in here. Same thing. I'm going to paste the aspect ratio to this not pasting Lumetri. There we go. Uh, for this one, drop the shadows way down because it was a little bit overexposed. Bring up the contrast a little bit, again, to whatever taste you want. And the uh, highlights, you can bump up the highlights a little bit because the sun was be baking down on there. Maybe drop the blacks a little bit. Uh, add a subtle S curve and maybe not so subtle. There we go. I'd call that one done. Add some saturation of 120 and then we're good to go. So that's the three clips three different scenes that we got really good colors. Also, it really does help when you have a really good canvas to work with. Obviously in Colorado like this, it was gorgeous out. But to really go ahead and add the creme de la creme on top of this footage, let's go ahead and grab an adjustment layer and we will add a lot. My favorite lot from Daniel Schiffer um, to just really give this more of a cinematic vibe. I'm going to go to the creative tab, go to browse. I'm going to go to my LUTs. I'm going to go ahead and grab my Houston LUT. It's not my LUT, it's Daniel's LUT, but it's phenomenal. And I'm just going to dial back the intensity of this LUT to about 35% right there. Maybe bump up the vibrance just a tad to like 20 or so. And you can see what the LUT does. It really does accentuate the colors a little bit. And you can also maybe just bump up the shadow, add a little bit more orange into there if you want. It's all to taste. And then lastly, just go ahead and add a little bit of sharpening. And Bob's your uncle. You've got a great set of images here that were super easy to color grade. You didn't see this take very long at all. It looks great. It's a true anamorphic. And um, yeah, I'm very, very impressed with this lens. A lot of people have complained that they're getting softer images. I really don't see that. But just keep in mind, anytime you put something in front of your sensor, you know, it's got to pass through that. So there is going to be the potential for it to actually be a little bit softer, but I'm just not seeing it. It looks really good. So if you have any questions, I'll be in the comments down below. If you want to see more tutorials just like this, or if you found this useful, let me know. I'll do more of them just like that. And there's also a link for this Freewell lens because man, I really do like this. I think it's like 30 or 40 bucks, but um, it doesn't really work well for photos, which I screwed up by leaving this on and I missed out on photos. But for video, my goodness, it does give you a wider aspect ratio along with a really unique true anamorphic look. That's going to do it, guys. As always, stay original.